Hey everyone, buckle up, because today we're diving into something that's pretty crucial for, well, anyone who gets behind the wheel. That's right, we're talking defensive driving. And no, this isn't just your grandma's driving tips. Okay. Yeah, some of those old school rules still hold up. Exactly. But we've got a whole stack of articles and even a YouTube video lined up all about taking your driving skills to the next level. Because, let's face it, even if you aced your driving test years ago, things change. The roads are more crowded, distractions are everywhere. It's a whole new ball game out there. It really is. And that's why we're not just talking about knowing the rules of the road. Right. Defensive driving is different, isn't it? It is. It's about being proactive, not reactive. So instead of just reacting to whatever's happening around you. You're anticipating those potential hazards before they even become a problem. Okay, I like where this is going. So how do our sources actually define def defensive driving? Well, one of them, put it this way, it's like imagining your car is surrounded by this invisible bubble of safe space. Okay, a safety bubble. I like it. Right. And defensive driving is all about managing that space constantly. It's about anticipating what other drivers might do, like having a plan ready if someone slams on their brakes or cuts you off. It's like they say, expect the unexpected. Exactly. And the thing is, this isn't just about avoiding fender benders. It's about staying safe out there. Absolutely. I mean, none of us want to think about it, but those what if scenarios... They happen. In fact, one of the articles actually cited a statistic from the International Transport Forum. They reported over 1,700 driving fatalities in Canada in a recent year. Wow. That's a sobering thought. It really is. And it highlights why defensive driving is so crucial. It's about stacking the odds in your favor, making sure you're prepared for anything. I'm with you on that. So how do we do it? What does it actually mean to be a proactive driver? They all emphasize a few key things. First and foremost, it's about constantly scanning your surroundings. And I'm guessing it's more than just a quick glance in the rearview mirror every now and then. Way more. Think of it like developing this driver's x-ray vision. You're looking through cars, anticipating brake lights, pedestrians, even potholes. So you're really taking in the whole picture, not just what's directly in front of you. Precisely. You want to have a sense of what other cars are doing around you, what the road conditions are like further down. You're looking for anything unexpected that might be waiting around the bend. So instead of just reacting to what's right in front of me, I should be trying to anticipate what other drivers are going to do before they even do it. You got it. And that driver's x-ray vision we talked about, yeah. it's especially crucial when it comes to blind spots. Oh, tell me about it. It's like those optical illusions where something just seems to disappear. Right. Except in this case, a disappearing car is not a good thing. Not at all. And, you know, one of the things the articles really hammered home is that it's not enough to just adjust your mirrors. You're telling me those shoulder checks are lifesavers. Absolutely. It's such a simple thing, just a quick glance over your shoulder before changing lanes. But it could make all the difference. Exactly. It could be the difference between a smooth ride and a fender bender or worse. Speaking of avoiding those fender benders, the articles we're looking at today all emphasize the importance of maintaining a safe following distance. Oh, absolutely. The three second rule, that's your best friend. Three seconds at least. At least. And remember, that's the bare minimum. Bad weather, heavy traffic, those situations demand even more space. Right, because you never know when you might need to slam on the brakes. Exactly. The more distance you have, the more time you have to react. Which brings me to another one of my pet peeves. People who seem to forget their turn signals exist. Ah, yes, the turn signal. Often neglected, always important. Seriously. The sources were unanimous on this one. Signal early, signal clearly. Even if you think you're the only one on the road. Especially then, you never know when another car might be coming around the corner or if a cyclist is approaching. It's just common courtesy, you know. Uh, it really is. It's about communicating your intentions, making the roads just a little bit less chaotic for everyone. And while we're on the topic of communication, let's talk about speed management. Okay, so I'm not the only one who sometimes feels the need for speed. But we've all been there. But here's the thing. Remember how we were talking about being proactive, yeah. managing your speed, it's not just about avoiding tickets. It's about giving yourself that extra time to react to things. Because sometimes things happen fast. They really do. So if you're already traveling at a safe speed, you have a much better chance of avoiding a collision. So we've talked about speed management, but how do we actually adjust to different driving conditions? Mm -hmm. You know, heavy traffic, bad weather, those long stretches on the highway, those can really put your skills to the test. Absolutely. And our sources had some really good advice for handling those trickier situations. Like what? 
What really stuck out to you? One thing that came up a lot was navigating highways. I mean, it's something most of us do pretty regularly, but it comes with its own unique set of challenges. Higher speeds, merging lanes that seem to appear out of nowhere. Don't even get me started on highway hypnosis. Exactly. It's like your brain goes on autopilot after staring at the road for too long. And that's the opposite of what you want when it comes to defensive driving. You really have to stay alert. And one of the articles mentioned that it's especially important to maintain an even greater following distance when you're on the highway. Which makes sense. Yeah. Because you're going faster. Exactly. More speed equals more stopping distance. So you need that extra buffer zone. For sure. Yeah. What else did they say about highway driving? Well, they talked a lot about strategic lane positioning. Okay. What's that all about? Basically, try to avoid driving in anyone's blind spot for too long. It's like... You don't want to be that car that suddenly appears when someone goes to change lanes. Precisely. That's always a little unnerving. Right. So it's about being predictable, making sure other drivers can see you. Makes sense. Mm. Now, what about merging? That always feels a little high pressure on the highway. It can be. So many near misses. Yeah, and I think that's why our sources really emphasize the importance of understanding those merging protocols. Merging protocols, you mean like? Those unspoken rules of the road that help keep traffic flowing smoothly, making sure you're up to speed before you try to merge, using your signals, yeah. finding that safe gap. It all comes down to communication and timing. Right. Because nobody likes a last minute swerve. Exactly. And when everyone's on the same page, it just makes those merging situations so much smoother. Now, shifting gears a little bit. Okay. We've talked a lot about the technical aspects of defensive driving. Right. But there's also a huge mental game involved in there. Absolutely. It's not just about knowing what to do. It's about being in the right headspace to actually do it. Because we all know how easy it is to get frustrated or distracted behind the wheel. And that's when those mistakes happen. Exactly. So yeah. how do we stay focused, manage our emotions, and you know avoid those road rage incidents? Well, remember that YouTube video we mentioned earlier? The one about defensive driving strategies. That's the one. They had a lot of great tips for mastering the mental game of driving. Like what? Well, one of the things that really stood out to me was the idea of space management. Space management? Didn't we already talk about that? We did. But this goes beyond just maintaining a safe following distance. This is about being aware of the space all around your vehicle. Okay, so not just behind you, but also... To the sides, yeah. in front of you, basically creating a buffer zone. Yeah. And the key to maintaining that bubble is anticipation. In the video, the expert even had this acronym MIT. MIT. Like the university. Not quite. This stands for mapping an intersection and tracking. Mapping an intersection and tracking. So it's like... You're not just seeing what's around you. You're actively understanding the flow of traffic, anticipating where other drivers are going, and planning your own moves accordingly. It sounds kind of like chess, but with cars. Exactly. It's about being several steps ahead, always having an escape route if you need it. And the more you do it, the more it becomes second nature. Right. Exactly. You start to anticipate potential hazards without even realizing it. That makes sense. You know, this whole discussion is making me think about that old Disney cartoon, Motor Mania. Oh, yeah. With Goofy. Yeah. He's a totally different person behind the wheel. Mr. Nice Guy turns into this aggressive monster. It's funny because it's true. Right. It's like we all have that inner road rager just waiting to come out. And that's why defensive driving is as much about keeping our cool as it is about mastering those physical techniques. So true. It's about staying calm, being aware, and making safe decisions no matter what the road throws at us. Well said. And on that note, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. From basic techniques to the mental game, it's been quite the deep dive. It has. But remember, folks, becoming a truly defensive driver is a journey, not a destination. It's about making those conscious choices every time you get behind the wheel. So keep practicing those skills, stay aware, stay alert, and most importantly, stay safe out there. And with that, we'll see you next time.